Okay, welcome back to another one of my uh, health and well-being episodes. Uh, I'm taking a look at methods for managing anxiety and depression. And uh, at, at a later date, I'll be adding in physical and dietary health ideas. And uh, But right now, I'm looking at means of trying to find ways that I've used in the past or um, uh, recommendations from other people about how they manage uh, the symptoms of anxiety and depression. And this one today, this is something I, I did a long while ago and uh, I found it extremely useful for a lot of these kinds of things, but it also, as a standalone, it's useful, but as something that actually um, works in conjunction with a couple of the others coming and in the next few episodes, they can work together synergistically to actually give you a really powerful set of tools to help you overcome it. And uh, to help you overcome uh, either anxiety or depression. And at first it sounds a little strange to say this, and, but I got some pennies here for this one to help uh, describe this one. but. What I like to do is, it doesn't have to be pennies, but this is something that, that makes it a little bit easier to do for me, is I've always got these things laying around and I'm not doing much else with them. So keep a few in your pocket, a handful in your pocket or whatever, and um, as you go throughout your day, whenever you, you know, think a negative thought to yourself, either um, a moment of anxiety, or uh, you're really down on yourself, or you don't think you can do anything right. Doesn't matter what you're saying to yourself. Just take one of these pennies, put it in a cup, or build a stack, or something like that, just to keep a tab. You can also do it by just uh, writing a, a check mark on a piece of paper. I like pennies because of once we get to the point where we look at them afterwards, um, it becomes useful for me in that sense. So, like, you, you keep a tally, is what you're really doing. And uh, you just build up uh, a collection of those every time you say something negative to yourself or think a negative thought about something, tell yourself you're stupid for some reason or another. Um, you just build up a, a tally of them, and at the end of the day, you take a look at that tally again. And the reason it's useful, and if, if you're going to try to do this, I, I kind of recommend giving it a try before the second half of this, where I explain why, because it's useful to go into it not knowing why you're doing it, because it's harder to sabotage yourself in the process. Not that you, you can't do it if you know what you're doing. It's just that if you don't know, and you're just keeping a tally of them, it's easier to be honest with yourself when you look at them later. So, the reason I look at them later is because it's not just keeping a, a, you know, a numerical tally, it's... If you think about... You finish off a day right now, and you think about, like, oh god, that was such a horrible day. No, it wasn't a horrible day. There were individual events that made your day horrible. But it wasn't the whole day. It was the, the events themselves that were horrible. So in the course of a day, you maybe had three, five, ten. You might even have 20 or 30 events that ma made you feel that they were horrible. But it's, it's just a finite number. It's a number of events. It's not the entirety of the day. It doesn't consume the existence of your day from waking to sleeping. There are discrete, distinct number of events. And once you have the ability to look at events like that and see them as individual parts of a day and not the entirety of the day, it allows you to be able to realize that between these two moments, between these two moments in the morning, I had moments that weren't this that I had, you know, a moment sitting at the table with my newspaper or your uh, Kindle um, uh, e-reader and sipping tea, quiet part of the morning, and there was nothing wrong with that time. 
There was something crappy that happened before it, and there may have been something crappy that happened after it. But in those middles of those moments, there were not crappy moments. And once you start to see where those moments are, where you have okay moments or moments where they're not bad, you can start to really think about how there may be more of those moments in a day than there are moments that are bad but we see the bad ones because our mind is trained to look for dangers, threats, and struggles. And if you, if you partition out those dangers, threats, and struggles that you go through in the course of the day into individual discrete moments, you can look back and say, in between all those moments are moments that aren't struggle and they're worthy of paying attention to. And maybe even cultivating them a little bit more. Maybe make that morning ritual that was okay between these two moments something a little more worth paying attention to and maybe expanding and redoing at another point in the day. Maybe have a little afternoon time where you do something very similar where you can just take that simple pleasure in those moments that don't stink. So keeping these to keep tally of the moments so you can see they aren't the whole thing. They're just little pieces within the day. It can really help you go a lot further with being able to find moments that aren't these. And I, I use pennies sometimes because pennies are kind of fun because you might have ten whole horrible moments during the course of the day. But I can't buy anything with ten cents. Ten cents isn't worth anything. And so it really makes it clear how insignificant those ten little instances might be. It's fun to also take note that as you spend time practicing, practicing this technique, as you go through the years, you will definitely start to realize that each time you do this, every now and then, do it once a week, you could do it every day if you wanted to, but you'll eventually reach a point where having two in a day is a lot where sometimes it feels like right now having less than 20 would seem like amazing. You'll have days where one is your average. I mean, you'll have times where you won't ever do any of them. And it's really kind of nice to realize it's like a no penny day. And you'll you'll appreciate it more, I think, when you when you kind of see it like that. And so being able to tally up those instances of uh, turmoil and struggle in your life and being able to see that they are not the whole of your life is a really valuable tool. Alright, so hope that helps you in some way and uh, I'll see you for the next one which should complement this fairly well.